There is no doubt that Keith and I have different metabolisms that affect the way our bodies lose weight, but what made them so different? In this video, we are gonna talk about factors that affect your metabolism and how our metabolisms match up. So metabolism is the sum result of all of your uh, bodily functions, the chemical reactions that take place in your body, right? Yep. And this is the reason that some people are fat, some people are thin, you know? Yep. And they can be eating the exact same amount of calories. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it, it's, it's really two things. So we have our, our basal metabolic rate. That is what it takes to keep you alive. Breathing, heart moving, all that kind of stuff. BMR. Then we have energy expenditure, which is on top of that. So it's how much we exercise. It's um, how much we move throughout the day. Just our, norm, our physical activity that we, that we have. And also there's the thermic effect of food. So it's those three things. You know, thermic effect of food means that when we digest, it's a very energy dependent process. So we actually burn calories when we eat. But yeah. those are the things that make up our metabolism. So let's look at some factors that influence metabolism overall. And are we how going we to be getting points for this? Yes. All right. Yep. So I'll go fire away. <laughs> okay. So, well, I'll, I'll, I'll throw, I'll throw one right at you. Muscle mass. Okay. Uh, we, we often think of muscle mass with metabolism and, and it is true. This is one of, you know, this is one of the reasons that women get mad at men. One of the, many. one of the, one of the many reasons, right. But, um, as far as metabolism, because men can eat more than women. And a big part of that is because men carry more muscle on their bodies than, than women do. Right. Uh, you obviously carry more muscle than I do. Right. So, uh, and, and our body fat, it's not body fat percentage. Our body fat percentages are both about the same. Pretty, pretty even. But I mean, my lean mass is actually more than your entire body weight. Hmm. So, you know, I have a lot more lean muscle tissue mm -hmm. to, um, just to support. Right. Yeah. So based on that alone, if we're going to score our metabolisms, you, you get the point on, on that one. Right. Um, and then let's move right into something that's very related to that, which would be exercise. Okay. Uh, we both exercise. Uh, both of us do resistance exercises as a core type of a thing, weightlifting. I will go through different programs, maybe do like a 12-week program here or there. But my, my central exercise is, is doing um, three days a week of resistance exercise with, with weights. And, and I do, I'm in the gym three days a week. Um, I like to lift very heavy, always just been a thing. Um, I also play hockey uh, on a weekly basis. We've talked about that before. And I've also recently added in um, almost a daily period where I'm doing almost some interval training for like 20 right. minutes. So Yeah. So actually you beat me hands down on, on exercise. Um, especially at times like this when my life is pretty crazy busy and I'm pretty much sitting at my computer. Looking good for me, isn't <laughs> okay, it? So, all, right, all right. So um, let's, okay. So now we have to move into uh, some other areas, which would, one would be of course hormones and hormones are obviously, you know, our bodies are just sacks of hormones that we're, we're just at the mercy of our yeah, hormones. Yeah. Um, and there's some metabolic uh, regulators that are hormones that you know just in in all of us uh you know the ones that come to mind growth hormone and norepinephrine they're part of that cocktail of hormones that start brewing in us like 4 a.m you know and start to wake us up in the morning and you know those those are what they are um two that really we talk a lot about with metabolism are leptin and thyroid so let's right. kind of focus on leptin first so leptin uh is the hormone we like it right? is that's right. our thing well, leptin, L stands for like. Leptin is produced by your fat cells, uh, and it's supposed to signal your brain when you have enough fat mm -hmm. and kind of turns off your appetite switch and also starts the fat burning. So it's kind right. of that regulator. That's and also why we like it. And, and the, we kind of call it the satiety hormone because it tells you when, you know, you're satisfied, you're good, right? Mm -hmm. You've eaten enough. What can happen is that you can have leptin resistance where your brain is just not hearing that signal, mm -hmm. you know, so you continue eating, you keep in taking the fat, your brain never gets the, the signal to shut down your appetite, you know, to start burning that fat. And there are some things that are really uh, causative factors in leptin mm -hmm. resistance. Uh, one of those is chronic inflammation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, it is just a metabolic killer, mm -hmm. right? Another one is increased belly fat, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and another one um, is 
What is the third one? Well, just being overweight That's for a long time. Right. <laughs> being, and it just, uh, which, uh, which is more the chronic high leptin. So they think that right. having too much leptin pumping out at, 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 for too long is a causative factor for leptin resistance. Right. So this is where I'm going to take the point on leptin. Yeah. And I think we have to, and, and, here's, and here's why. So the causative factors that you talked about, inflammation, body, uh, belly fat, and um, just being overweight for the longest period. Long now we both struggled with our, our weight in our, you know, in my 20s into my early 30s, I mean, probably seven to eight years, I, was, I had a lot of trouble with being overweight and controlling my weight. But then I did get it under control after that period. You were overweight for more like 20, Plus. 30 from my 30s into my mid 50s so 25 years possibly right and you did at that time have a lot of belly fat um, you did have your inflammation was through the roof uh, in with, with indicated by your blood your yeah. blood uh, results of uh, your high sensitivity CRP blood blood test yeah. um, and you know just the fact that you were overweight for that long so your fat cells were pumping out a lot of a lot of leptin and probably led to that so and this is part of a a theory that keith and i have been developing with keith's metabolism and and how much of importance has there been to your past diet history of being overweight for 25 years right. uh you know how much metabolic damage did that did that create there the body is wonderfully adaptive it will adapt to whatever it is being given and uh you know it, it's you know it's very likely that 25 years it said okay this is how we run now and we'll do the best that we can and and i can probably we can probably parlay that into our other other hormone that we're going to talk about which is thyroid so right so your thyroid hormone uh, you know right here in the neck it uh thyroid hormone is responsible for um kind of getting into your cells and kind of ramping up um that whole energy process so, and thyroid hormone, it, it's stimulated in the brain, you know, that stimulates the gland to produce thyroid. It produces a form called T4. That is released in circulation, and that T4 is an in inactive form of thyroid. It has to be converted to T3 to make it active. And then that T3 gets into the cells and kind of flips a switch. Um, yeah, so, so right there, so thyroid is very complicated. It's very complex. Uh, and, and just right there, what you said, it points out three areas that have to be working for your thyroid to be working optimally. So there's the making of the thyroid hormone itself. Then there's the conversion from the inactive form to the active form, of, which is T3. And then there's moving that T3 into your cell where it can work on the mitochondria and, and pr the production of right. a, uh, energy. And here too, now a lot of a lot of um, nutrients have to go into play there, and and I, uh, you know it's it's not the scope of our video here. I, I will tell you that I do have a, one of my most popular videos actually on on Dr. Becky Fitness, my other YouTube channel, uh, a few years old, but it is still very, very good, good on on thyroid. Uh, so we'll point to you if you're interested in learning more about the thyroid. That's where you can go. But what I want to just mention is that diet is important with with thyroid. And let's just focus on the last stage there where we talked about the T3 getting into the right. cell. It, so it has to be, any, anything that gets into the cell has to be transported through the, the fatty membrane of the cell exactly. yeah. uh, and not getting into too much of it. But the types of fat that make up that membrane, you know, are, are a lot of times based on what you're eating and the types of fat that you eat. Uh, some fats are gonna be better than others. Healthy fats are gonna make healthier cells, Right. right? Um, and unhealthy fats like our vegetable, vegetable oils, oils, which are in everything, right? When we are overweight, we take in a lot because they're in everything. They're in the processed foods. They're in the snack foods. They're in the things that you were eating for 25 years. And I'm, I'm no angel. I when I was, I was eating them as well, but, but kind of stopped before you did, which, you know, kind of building our theory here of right. how long are you on this, these poor eating habits and how much is that going to affect then these hormones? Yep. So, you know, bad, bad fats going in, they make your cells, they just don't work right. And 25 years of that for me 
we think probably had a kind of a negative effect. Right. And Not also, kind of a negative effect, a negative effect. Yeah, and, and just the, the low nutrient value of those foods, so you're not getting the other right. hormone, uh, the other nutrients that are needed to support the other levels of your, where your hormone is being right. produced and, and converted and things right. like that. Um, and then along, along with the thyroid too, I think we should probably talk about um, making sure that you're not going too low on your calories. Right, so thyroid, um, hormone can be downregulated in the presence of a very low caloric intake. Mm -hmm. there, there's no reason for your body to be expending a lot of energy and making heat and, and all this stuff if you don't have calories coming in. Your body is a very self-preserving mm -hmm. mechanism, mm -hmm. right? So um, we kind of have this theory that, that some of my low calorie extended low calorie experiments and specifically the the famous 10 day fast mm -hmm. um, may have done me some damage uh, as far as down regulating you know my my thyroid output and yeah. I've been tracking that I actually had you know another blood test today mm -hmm. so we'll see what the results yeah. of that are but um, you know it, it's a very real thing that happens I mean mm -hmm. it's, it's well documented yeah yeah so uh, you know I, and I have not done that necessarily uh, like you have with a, an extended fast and things like that. So I'm going to take the I'm going to take the point on on thyroid and. Are we even? I have no idea. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, this will be the tiebreaker if it is because I got you matched on this one for a big time. So age is a huge factor. Crap. Uh, yeah. So we're not going to change that one. No. I'm okay. We're going to catch up. So um, I, it, this was some really interesting research to me. I'm just going to go through it very quickly, and then we're going to do our. Kind of wrap up, okay? Yeah. So, uh, research has shown that many older individuals burn nearly 30% fewer calories through NEAT. And this, that's that non exercise. Non exercise ad adaptive? No. No, non exercise something thermogenesis, right? Non exercise, well, whatever it is. But that's all the fidgeting, the standing, mm -hmm. the nervousness, the pacing. All those little things that you you do, and you know that person who is always doing that, and they're always skinny, right? They can't gain, gain a pound because they burn out so many calories just doing like really annoying things. Um, but as we get older, that level just naturally drops. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so other research shown by age seventy, the average person has lost twenty pounds of muscle, and their resting metabolic rate has decreased by about eleven percent. So, and that doesn't just happen at seventy. Yeah, right? right. So at age thirty, you start that slow yeah. decline. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> bummer. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is a bummer. So this other study I thought was really interesting looked at two groups. One was average age of thirty nine, the one was an average age of sixty nine. And they found that the older of the two groups had twenty percent fewer mitochondria. So these are the things that are taking in our nutrients and, and burning them up. Right. right. Instead yeah. of storing them, yep, making it, um, yeah. and they found that that of you know the the mitochondria that they had left, which were twenty percent fewer, were only half as efficient as their younger counterparts, right? Wow. So. Yeah. So takeaways. It kind of sucks getting older. <laughs> number one. Number one. Yeah. Uh, number two, uh, exercise is important, and yep. maintaining your muscle mass as we get older right. is important. I'm sure that was displayed in these studies, but. Right, and and both resistance and you know some form form of you know aerobic or um, interval type training is going to be important. Um, you know, good sleep habits. You know, mm -hmm. if you're not sleeping well, that's going to raise all your cortisol. It's going to like it's going to throw your hormones mm -hmm. into a, a mess. Mm -hmm. So, being being well rested, getting good sleep, um, it's something that's important. That's not really talked about too much. Proper yeah, diet. proper diet certainly um, is going to play a role. And, um, you know, a couple things to emphasize, uh, you know, not going too low calorie for too long. Uh, now, a, a low calorie day here and there is certainly not going to throw your metabolism right. into disarray. Um, but just going too long, too long can slow your metabolism. We saw that with The Biggest Loser, yep. you know, famously displayed that. Uh, but, but also, um, you know... <laughs> The thing is to do it now. Uh, if you're on the fence about, you know, starting a diet, oh, I don't want to start another diet, and you know, these factors, having belly fat for a long, long time, uh, having a poor diet, and eating these processed foods with vegetable oils, and they, you do not outrun these, these, the metabolic 
changes that happen from a poor diet, even if you feel like you're getting along okay right now. So I, I think I'm going to put that as the as the big takeaway. You know, do it do it now. Make the changes now. Um, you know, start a low start cutting your carbs. Go low carb, then go keto. Incorporate intermittent fasting. Stay on our channel. These are the things that we yep. talk about. These are the things that we talk about over on our website, which is drbeckyfitness.com. So stick with us. Get started. It's it's a wonderful life on the other side of sugar. You, you can you can do it. So uh, hey, I hope that is helpful to you. I hope it gives you some aha moments. And so much uh, so much appreciate you guys being here. Thanks so much. And subscribe. Hit the bell icon. We'll see you next week. And you're not getting any younger. <laughs>